Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we're doing another cheese board, but of course we're going to do something a little different with it. And uh, so you can see that I've already started where I poured the resin over the section that I want to decorate. And on the bottom here, I have I had painted on some liquid latex, let that dry, and then that protects the bottom of my board for the pour. In terms of colors and things like that, I use, today I'm using Black Diamond. So I use their Lux Emerald Green and I've used a little bit of their Diamond Aluminum. So it's like a dark gray and dark, dark green. And so I just poured those on, no special way, I just kind of poured it to see uh, however it kind of looked nice. And then the sparkle that you see in here, which is actually really cool. The sparkle in here was actually a mix. So I used a couple of the new stiletto glitters from Laura's Art Corner. So I just kind of mixed them, uh, no specific measurements, just they have their own unique sparkle to them. So I just wanted kind of a mix. It's almost like a rainbow sparkle now when you look at it. So, so that's all I did is I just kind of put a little bit of that on here too. I do have the video, so that should have been running while I was explaining all that there just to kind of show you guys what was done and then I'll let that cure. And so we have this here. Now the twist of what we're doing today is we're going to be making this, we're going to be adding a little bit of a geode kind of look to it. Nothing over the top. We don't want to, we're not going to be adding massive crystals or anything. We're going to be actually adding a really neat product that is, um, they are abalone laminate sheets. So you can see here, I'll actually take it out of the package. So, okay. it wants to cooperate with me. So as you can see, it's a super paper thin uh, sheet of, la of uh, abalone shell. Uh, it's like a, I don't know how they make it. <laughs> So don't ask me that, but, um, but it is supposed to be actual shells that they have been able to kind of press or, uh, who knows? I don't have no idea what the process is, but it is supposed to be real shell. So we have that, uh, you see a piece has been broken off and I don't know where that went, but, um, so I found these on AliExpress. Um, they are on Etsy too, but they're pricier on Etsy and this is a pricey product. So I just kind of want to let you guys know that off the bat, that it is an expensive product. Um, I did order it from AliExpress, so it was a little bit cheaper, but it does obviously take time to arrive. And they have many different colorings. Like look how that pretty that one is there. And there's also this beautiful one here which is really neat. Now they're super fragile because they are shell. They are, so they're very easily breakable. You can see even this one's had, it's starting to kind of fragment off a little bit. So you have to be really super gentle with them. So, um, and there is optional, different options for thickness. Now I wanted a thickness that I could cut because I do want to be able to cut these into the shapes that I want to be able to use or um, or something like that. So um, if they get too thick, then you can't really cut them or you'd have to use like special machinery to cut them. So I tried to get the thinnest ones that I could find. And this white one is thicker than this the abalone one here. So we are going to be using this one today and I'm going to be adding a piece of it to uh, my board. And as I said, it is expensive. So keep that in mind. I can't remember the exact price, but I remember it being a, you know, pretty expensive. So you're not going to want to use this likely unless you're just using maybe cut off pieces. You're not really going to want to be using these in your coasters or things like that, unless you have really great pricing on your coasters. You're going to want to use these on more expensive pieces so you can justify using them. So, so we have our piece here. And like I said, I'm going to be just kind of adding in probably about a piece here and then another piece, a little piece over here just to kind of, you know, get a little bit of that beauty on the board. So with that, uh, let's get started. Okay, so in order to cut our shell, I'm gonna call it the shell board, even though that's not the official name. <laughs> so in order to cut this, um, I'm gonna, you can see it's already broken a bit. Oh, and the more I touch it, the more it's breaking. So there's already a piece that's kind of broken here. So I'm gonna utilize that. So I'm gonna go in and just see if I can cut kind of just in a regular shape 
towards that line there. So as you can see, it is quite fragile. I don't know if you guys can hear that sound, but my goodness. Okay, so there we go. So we cut off our little piece and there we have it. And there is a good side or I guess a better side than one side is better than the other. So we have that. I'm going to go in and actually, um, this line's really straight here. So I'll go in and I'm going to just kind of curve that up a bit. This will, yeah, so it's just going to go, I don't know exactly where, but somewhere like here. So let's get that cut. Okay, so we have our two pieces. So this is the larger piece. And then we have our little piece here. And uh, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna try to line them up somewhat kind of along the curve, not directly like that, but maybe a little bit more on an angle and then kind of line them up. So I'm thinking I might, when I do the, the lines, whether they might connect somehow. So I think I just want to have it something like that. And then what we're gonna do is uh, we'll be using my Dur Clear varnish to kind of act like a glue. So we'll put a little bit on the back and then we'll press those down and hopefully it'll stay. And the same thing with this one here. And then um, I want to see what I can put kind of around it to kind of give it that geode uh, look to it. So I do have these, uh, the Lux Silver Chips from Daniel Baresi, the DB Resin Products brand. Um, I also have these, which is kind of cool. They're called Dragon Egg, but they're a really neat stone from Counterculture. So I have those, and I might be using some sort of extra glitter. I know we have quite a bit of glitter already on the back here, so um, but you guys know that <laughs> there's never enough glitter for me. So I do have potentially maybe something like this glitter, the Shell Pink, or... Um, I do have also uh, the chunky glitter from um, Lutz Resin. So, um, so I don't know. We're just going to play and see kind of what look we end up going with here. Because we have a lot of green happening in the background as well as even within the abalone, I'm going to try to see if I can contrast that a bit with um, some of the other colors that I'm using. We'll see how it looks. I don't know. If it doesn't work out, then we'll change course. But we'll see how it goes. And for lines, I'm going to be using pale gold in the Cerny Relief today. So um, again, I'm not really sure how many lines because it's a small space, but we'll just kind of add in as we go along here. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to see if we can glue down our abalone. So I'm putting a little bit of the Duraclear varnish here and we'll literally just paint the back. Um, now, like I said, these shells kind of have a rigidity to them. They're, they're not super I mean they're flexible but not um they're not like fabric like you know they're not going to bend that much when you try to s stick them down so we shall see how this works um so we'll just kind of we'll stick that down here like that and then we'll do the same thing with our large guy We don't need, I don't, I don't we, like I said, we don't, we just need to kind of hold in place because we will be covering this, the whole design in another layer of resin once everything's fully dry. So if it doesn't sit perfectly flat, I mean, try to, but if it can't for whatever reason, then um, it's not the end of the world because the resin will cover it and seal it you know, in place, make sure there's no gaps and things like that. All right. So we have that and I think I'm going to put it about here like that. And like I said, I'm going to make it so they kind of want to go towards each other. So there's that. And then 
Like I said, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I as much as I really like the dragon egg, I think I'm going to save that for another project. And we're going to use the, this, the, these crystal chips are, sorry, these Lux chips are more geode-ish. So why don't we just do that? Okay. And for that, we're going to kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to put a little bit more of our varnish here. Um, I do have a lot of people asking about Mod Podge and some other types of adhesives. Um, I think I've mentioned it in some of my other videos. I haven't personally tried Mod Podge um, under resin, so I can't say for sure. But I have had other products that were glue-like, like not a varnish. It was actually more intended to be glue. And I some of them I did find ended up... Um, either yellowing or getting cloudy over time under the resin. So I actually, and generally I just stay away from those type of things. And I find the gloss varnish doesn't do that because um, it is a non-yellowing formula. Plus um, it's not, it's not meant to be a glue. It's just, it's meant to be a top coat varnish. So um, I've had better luck with that. So uh, if you've had good luck with Mod Podge, then definitely do it. Like I said, for, for me, um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be overly willing to try it just from the experiences I've had before, but you guys can let me know in the comments as well. Like if you've tried, uh, Mod Podge and I'm not talking about like if it, um, you know, that it turned yellow right away. I'm talking about like six months later, a year later, that just the areas that had the glue actually yellowed, um, I might actually be able to show you guys because I actually have a piece that I did. So actually, let's do that. Hold on one second. Okay, so there's this piece here. And um, you'll see, I, I mean, it's hard to know because, um, you know, you didn't see what this piece looked like when it was original. But you can see the... See it? This area here, that's yellow, um, and even here, the where it's like there's glitter, but then there's like a yellow golden tone in the back. Um, I mean, it doesn't look terrible if you just kind of look at it and you had no idea, but this was clear um, before, and it was like a you know clear, so it looked kind of like a white or like a transparent background, and yeah, uh, it just. It just kind of ambered, I guess, over time is really what happened. And it, it's not the look that I had originally made. So I know what this looked like when I created it. And this is not, this is not it. So, um, like I said, it's not the end of the world, I guess, but it's just disappointing to see that that could happen. And that was under the, that was, you know, there's a layer of resin over top of that, that glues. And this was a glue glitter. Um, but it's one of those brands that have the glitter mixed in with the glitter glue and, uh, and I used it. It looked really beautiful when I first used it, but that is ended up is what happened after the fact. So that's the reason why I stay away from it. Just cause I don't like when um, my pieces kind of change drastically over time. So, okay. So anyways, back to this. Um, okay. So we have, I've, I've laid down some of the some of the gloss varnish. And then we have these beautiful Lux pieces here. So I'm just going, I'll be going with my brush afterwards too, just to kind of line these up, but just wanna kind of sprinkle them down. I do have little spoons to do this, but eh. I'll just do it by hand. Okay, so we'll go into a quick time lapse. You guys can see me put these down and then we'll join up afterwards.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished that up. So as you can see how those look with the chips. Actually, I moved this one down a bit because I was remembering that with these stones, it might not be as comfortable when you're holding the handle. So just moved it down a little bit so that um, we're accommodating for that. But yeah, so you can see how that's looking. So basically, we don't really need to do too much more in terms of adding stones or things. I mean, you can definitely add more if you wanted to, but I'm probably going to keep my board a little bit more on the simple side. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in the geode lines. And once we're done that, I will also be adding in a line here because I do that on all of my cheese boards where I add in a line of the acrylic outliner here and we'll go more into explaining um we'll go more into um explaining why i do that and how that actually is part as much as it's part of the aesthetic it's actually also part of my top coating process so we'll go into that as well so the first thing we'll do is i'm actually gonna, i decided to use two colors for the geode lines um so i'm gonna i am gonna use the pale gold but i've also picked up um, one of my pearl white ones. So this way I can add some white lines as well as the gold. So we'll go ahead and add those in. And again, there's no real right or wrong here. We're just going to kind of find areas where we want to add some more details. And uh, yeah, so we'll go into another quick time lapse and get that finished up. All right, so there we go. So that is all of our lines added in. So I don't think we actually need to do a whole lot more with this because, um, like I said, we want the abalone to kind of be the focus and we've surrounded that with stone. So that kind of helps with that. And then our geode lines are kind of more of background as well as the background itself, which has quite a bit of glitter and things happening. So there's a lot of interesting things happening on this piece to kind of grab your attention. And as you can see, I created a quite of a thick line of the uh, acrylic along the edge here. And like I said, once we leave this to dry and we're ready to start top coating, we'll go into um, my process and how I do that with a piece like this. All right, so we'll let this dry. It'll probably take about six hours and then we'll be back. Okay, so our board is dry now so you can see all the lovely details there and now we're ready to add our top coat so um as i mentioned this uh line here that i added with our acrylic outliner is a really important line for how i top coat a lot of my boards and what i found is i personally like my personal preference is not to have um, you know, sometimes I see other resin artists where they, you know, just allow the resin to, you know, the clear resin to pass the, uh, the colored resin. And I guess in some styles that looks nice, but, um, for the most part, it's just not my preference. I would much rather have a clean line. So by adding this, um, this, you know, acrylic line here, and like I said, I make it kind of thick. I don't know if you can see how it's that it's higher than the resin I'm not sure if you can see that but um so i make it so it's higher so basically i'm making a wall so when i um when i pour the resin it's gonna stop here now i do that and like majority of the time it's completely fine it works great um sometimes if there's low spots like right here there's a bit of a lower spot there might be a bit of an issue um depending on how thick or if the resin size it wants to run or whatever there's always going to be something right that happens with resin so um so i create that little wall and then the second thing i do that is 
um, just kind of a secondary backup is I'll put some kind of protection here on the board. So I used to use tape and I would just basically have to tape and cut um, along this, um, you know, organic edge. And sometimes that could be a bit challenging. So I don't always do that anymore. Um, so now what I do is I use liquid latex. So I use this. And again, this is for um, when you want to use, you know, use it as a backup for stopping or trying to, you know, protect your board. You don't want to use this if you are going to be pouring and then you know for sure that um, that the resin is going to definitely run over and it's going to be sitting on top of the latex. This is just more of a backup plan because what's going to happen is it's just like if you tape. So if you ever tape your boards and like how I did the initial pour with the green. I didn't tape anything. I just let the resin kind of run where it wanted to. But let's say I wanted it to be a straight line or something like that. I would have normally put a piece of tape there knowing the resin was going to, you know, possibly run over that, uh, the tape. And then the technique of using the tape for in that instance is that you're going to need to pull that tape up before the resin completely cures because it needs to still be semi-fluid, not running, but it needs to kind of be like, it's almost like a molasses type of texture where it's no longer going to move that much, um, but it allows you to remove the tape. So um, so that's the technique if you're putting tape down and you're letting the resin run over. Now, if you use liquid latex for that technique, it's not going to be as easy for you to try to pull up liquid latex when the resin is kind of half cured or something like that. So I wouldn't recommend it for that purpose. Again, I'm using it as a backup plan in case uh, resin does happen to overflow my little, you know, acrylic wall here. So, and when, if that was to happen, um, and again, I come down here often to check it. If uh, once I put the top coat on, if I know there's a possibility that it's going to be moving, um, is I'll come down and check and if I see that there are some areas where the, the resin is leaking over past the line onto the liquid latex, I actually take my you know, piece of paper towel. I'll put a little bit of alcohol on it. This is the alcohol that I use, the 99%. So I'll put a bit of that alcohol on my paper towel and I'll literally like with the silicone, sorry, with the latex still on the board, I'll actually go and try to wipe out any of the leaks of the resin so that it's not going to just be sitting on the silicone because if it fully cures with that um, on top of the silicone you're gonna have a much harder time trying to remove it so that's so I want to explain it because I know a lot of people in my last cheese board video ask about um, you know what I was using to protect the board along the edge here so that's the explanation for the liquid latex and again like I said only if only as a secondary protection don't you like I mean if you have if you have done it and it works for you to use it as the primary protection when you're pouring resin then fine I mean for the bottom um, of the boards there's you know we are using it as the primary protection but you know a lot of times I will actually be going in and either reheating the resin here um, so that I can pull up the silicone or I'm actually cutting an edge with my knife so that I can get a nice clean edge to pull that up. On coasters or anything with a sharper edge, generally it's cutting its own line so you don't have to worry, but because this is a very rounded board, I'm likely going to have to go in and actually just kind of create a clean line around this with a knife and then pull all the silicone, um, the latex up. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If you have, if you guys have questions about this, um, definitely message me in the comments and ask your questions there. So but I hope that makes it clear in terms of how or why I'm using this in this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my uh, liquid latex here on my board and then we need to let that dry. So it usually takes, depending how thick you're putting it, it usually takes, you know, between 30 minutes and an hour. And I've already poured some here and I have my brush. It's actually starting to settle already because it's been so long. And I'm just going to literally just you know, paint it on the board. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna let that dry. 
like I said, it's about 30 minutes or so. And then we'll be back to pour resin. And I have one more trick that I'm going to show you um, before we pour. Okay, so we're back. This is almost dry. Um, by the time I finish mixing resin and doing a few of the things, it'll be ready. So I figure I'll jump back in. Um, so I want to show you one more trick before we are ready to pour our resin. And that is leveling. So normally when you are pouring, res um, pouring resin on any flat surface, you want to make sure your board is level. So you'd be checking it this way to make sure it's level and you'd be checking it this way to make sure it's level. Now, the trick that I learned um, for the top coat in, in my particular types of pieces is that I actually want to slightly tilt my board. So this way what's going to happen is if I raise it from this side here and I just kind of tilt the board up this way, what's going to happen is the resin isn't going to have as much pressure on that little wall that I've created with my acrylic paint. It's actually going to slightly kind of go, um, it's going to lean or roll, you know, um, flow <laughs> and it's going to flow down, um, you know, to the left. So this way it doesn't put pressure on the wall, but it's still enough. Like you don't want it to make it super angled, but enough so that it's just not trying to lay flat because uh, resin is a self leveling medium. So if you can, you know, if you leave it flat, it's going to just, you know, try to flatten out everywhere and it may go over this little wall. So I find that if I just slightly tilt it back a bit, it's going to just, it's less likely we're going to have leaks. So it could still happen and it has still happened sometimes. Like I said, depending if, you know, the um, integrity of my wall isn't that great, but uh, normally it works really well. Like 98% of the time it works. I do have the odd problem, the odd times where I've had leaks, but usually it's fine. So, um, so the way I do that is underneath my board here, I have actually, these are just um, mica containers that I use. So I have them there. And like I said, I know that my board is level right now sitting on those and I make it so that I have two on this side and one here and you can have two and two if you want, but whatever. So, and then what I do is I take, um, paper towels. You could use paper, cardboard, whatever you want. I use paper towels just because I can fold them to the thickness that I want. And then I just kind of shim that under the board here. And then the same thing under here. Right. So now that I put the paper towels there, um, you can see that my level has gone slightly this way. Now, I want it a little bit less. I'll just, you know, squish the paper towels down and I want it somewhere in this range where it's kind of touching the line or slightly over. And like I said, that's not going to cause the board to be completely unlevel, but it, what it does is it just helps the resin to flow kind of backwards that way. So this way we're not worried about it trying to go over the line. Yeah. So that's that way. And then this way, it's still pretty level this way. So it'll still have resin right up until the edge here. It just will want to kind of flow that way. All right. So raid resin. Okay, so we're back and our board is now dry and as you can see it's looking pretty nice so there we go um so we're going to take off the silicone so there's a bit on the front here but i want to take off the back um, i just actually um heated it a little bit with the, the heat gun just to kind of loosen up the the resin a little bit and as you can see i've already started peeling up you can see that um started peeling up the the latex so and I was something I also did here which I don't know if you can actually see is I've just kind of sc scored the resin a little bit here to kind of help because again this is a rounded edge um, it doesn't really want to um, it doesn't it's not gonna break off in a clean line if you have a squared edge board it will break off in a clean line so what I'm just doing here is I'm just kind of 
you know, giving it a place to break. So, like I said, we're going to pull this. And there you go. So you can see it's coming off clean there. And then the silicone comes right off. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into a quick time lapse and I'll do the rest and we'll be right back. Okay, so the back is done. So we have all that taken off. Now I will, um, normally what I do is I do go back in along here um, with my sander, my little Dremel with like this, the little soft sanding brush. And I just kind of smooth that out because I mean, it's fine, but um, just to kind of really get that edge smooth, I do that. And then on the front here, we just have the, the latex to peel up. And as you can see, that comes up super easy. We didn't have any overflow leaks on this, so that was awesome. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a new board that I've never used before, but I bought it on Amazon and uh, it looks like the latex actually kind of, it's probably it just dried out the wood a little bit al along the area that I have had the latex. So in order to fix that, um, what I'm gonna do is I have my cutting board oil and I don't use this um, on all of my boards because some of my boards are already pre-finished so I don't need it but on a board like this where it looks like it is going to dry out a little bit I will go in and add um, a little bit of oil just to kind of bring back that shine to it so I just you can use a soft cloth I'm just going to use this uh, paper towel just for to show you guys so you put a little bit on there and then you can just go back in and actually bring the color back on the board. So there you go. And I can do the same on the back as well. Um, I'll do it off camera, but you can do the same thing on the back to kind of bring that color back on the, to back to its natural state. I'll finish, you know, finish up off camera. So anyway, so just so you can see, so that's what our board, ooh, that's what our board looks like. And there we go. So we're all set. So this is our finished board. Again, this is a very simple design. I just really want to show you guys um, how to use the laminated abalone. Um, I will likely, I have about three of these boards that I purchased, so I probably will make two more similar style, but with the other two, um, the other two shell patterns that I have. So um, if you're interested in buying any of the things that I make on my channel, definitely um, head on over to my website. It's leahdiadesigns.com. I sell pretty much everything that I make on YouTube, but I also make many other products as well, and they're on there. So feel free to go over there and check it out. I'll see if I can upload this this weekend by the time this video is up. If not, just give it a couple days and then it should be there. Um, yeah, so anyway, so if you, um, I hope you guys like the video and I hope you like this technique. And like I said, I think it's a pretty simple design. Obviously with geodes, you can do a lot more with it. If you want to add more stones, you either want to more add more glitter. Um, there's so many other possibilities that could be done with this type of style. I just wanted to kind of give you, you know, like I said, a kind of a basic um, tutorial on it. But also I really like this style. It's simple, it's elegant. So um, there's definitely... Um, a lot of flexibility here with this. So anyways, guys, I hope that you like this video and that you like the tutorial. If you did, if you have any comments or questions, um, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you can, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, just so, you know, it helps with the channel, helps me grow. And um, I'd love to do a lot more of this for you guys, as you know. So this will really help if um, the channel is doing well and, you know, I can bring a lot more videos to you. All right, so I'm going to get going, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day and that you, you know, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.